everyone, my name is Gwen, and today I want to talk about one of my favorite things in software development, which is APIs. Now, many of us and much of our work in software development has to do with interacting with or building web-based or HTTP-based APIs, whether it's REST or GraphQL in whatever language or style, it's a ubiquitous and important part of software development. I've spent quite a bit of my time over the last years trying to figure out better ways of building APIs uh, from you know, trying out GraphQL to different frameworks or languages, etc. And if it's just a test project or a learning project, there's not much to worry about but besides just building the API and having it. However, if you are building an API that real users are going to use, or if it's for a client or for your company, then there are a lot of other considerations that you have to make beyond just building out your endpoints and exposing them. As an application grows beyond, you know, just a few endpoints, it becomes increasingly more difficult to manage and track every single endpoint and make sure, you know, is it secure? Can I monitor it? What about the performance? How can I improve and make data-driven decisions about my API? Those things are not always easy to do, but there are tools out there that can help us a lot. And I want to show you one of these tools today. It's actually a startup called Treble. Now, I think they're a cool company with a great product and they have very nicely agreed to sponsor this video for me. So if you like what you see in the video, I encourage you to check out the links below and I'll show you some interesting features and links that you can check out later on in the video. As software developers, it's always really important to stay up to date on what the industry is doing, what tooling we can use to help us in our development work, and particularly now stay on top of security concerns especially in these HTTP exposed API endpoints for the applications that we are building. Before we dive in, let me give you a brief overview. So Treble is an API monitoring and observability tool, and it basically watches all of the requests made to your API, and it gives you data points on over 40 metrics per request, it will automatically map out your API and write all of the API docs for you and give you this cool AI assistant that knows about your API. So you can ask it questions. You can ask it to, let's say, write an SDK or some tests for your API for you. It also allows you to track errors in real time and gives you metrics on the quality of your API, like your performance and gives you a, a security rating for every single endpoint. That allows you to assess potential vulnerabilities and address them before they become a real problem in these live APIs. The application that I'm gonna be using to demonstrate this is actually an application that I built over a period of, of several months and over dozens of live streams right here on this channel. It's in full stack JavaScript with Express on the back end, and then it uses Vue.js on the front end. And it's just a tool that I built to help learners track and manage learning resources and kind of arrange them into a curriculum style. I've been wanting to rebuild and update this application for a while and kind of have a relaunch. So I thought this was a great opportunity to dive back in, update dependencies, and also get some metrics on the status of my API. To start off, I'm just gonna give you a quick walkthrough of this application. This is on my GitHub. If you go to my Faraday Academy GitHub, linked in the description below, you can see this curriculum app. And basically it's a mono repo with the back end and the front end in two different folders in the same repo. If you read the readme here, you can see some information about the tech stack, the design schemas, everything. Should be pretty thorough in the readme if you want to understand more. It's a full stack JavaScript app. And the easiest way to run this right now is to make sure you're on the dev branch and then go and clone this repo locally. And then you can go into each of these folders, the front end and the back end, and just run them separately. 
of course, after you install all of the packages with npm install. So I have two different terminal windows open and I've already installed the packages on the front end and on the back end. So I can just on the back end, I think the command is npm start. That starts my express server on the back end with mongoose running to connect to my database. Locally on my computer, I have MongoDB running. I'm just giving an overview here, not really a tutorial about the specific technologies, but I have Mongo running on my computer on its default port 27017. And I have the database for this app called Curriculum App. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, I can zoom in. Okay, so I have the Curriculum App and you can see, of course, Mongo in NoSQL land, these are called collections instead of tables. And you can see I already have some dummy data inside some of these collections. Now I can run the front end too. So I can run the front end. It's a Vue.js application. I'll run it with npm run serve. And it's running on 8081. So I'm just going to copy this. And if I go to my browser, and this is the application. You can see some from some of the information here that you can track your progress through learning material and kind of organize it into a curriculum for yourself. Let me see if I zoom in. Keep track of your progress, set goals, achieve goals, etc. So you can sign up or log in. You can also view all of the curricula that are public. If you're logged in, you'll also have a separate tab here called My Curricula. I'm just showing you because I'm going to use Treble to take a look at all the different endpoints that this application uses. So if I go to Treble's website, Mission Control for your APIs, I'm going to log in since I already have an account. And here on my dashboard, you can see I have two projects. Now projects are basically applications that you've connected to Treble. This is a demo application that they give you out of the box. So you can see some of the features and get used to it without setting up your own application yet. This is a project that I created. I called it test project, but it's actually the curriculum app you just saw. Before we dive into this, I actually want to show you how to create a new project here. So if I go to create new project, I can give this project a name. I can call it curriculum app, give it the base URL. For now, I'm just going to use localhost. Of course, my backend is actually running on port 5000, I think. And I'm going to choose my backend framework. For this, I'm using JavaScript's Express framework, set my developer environment. I can call it development. I'll just call it local because I already called the other one development. If I have other team members to add, I don't. So I'm just going to create the project. And now I have this new project that I created and it takes me through three steps basically to set up and start using the project. The first thing is that I need to install the Express SDK. So you can read through their helpful guides. They have one for each of the SDKs that they support here in various languages and frameworks. I already have the Express one installed in my application. You can see here I installed Trouble Express here. And then after it's installed, it basically needs these two environment variables, the API key and your project ID. You can get these by going back to the instructions and you can copy the API key and your project ID here and then set them up in your ENV. So in my backend here, I can go into my ENV and I already had these values from before, but I'm just going to overwrite them for now. Now I need to rerun my server, of course, so it uses the new ENV. 
Okay, npm start again, it reran, and go back to the browser. The next step is to set up the middleware. If you've used Express before, this is just a regular pattern for Express middleware with app.use. This app file is really just to load my environment variables, and then it pulls in the index.js from server. So this is where I define all of my middleware here. And you can see I have the express treble middleware defined. Now I could pass in an options object here, but since I'm using the defaults, it will automatically look for the treble API key and for the treble project ID on my process.env that I am loading here. I'm requiring them from my .env file. Since I'm using the defaults, I don't need to define that options object. I'll talk about field masking in a second. So I'll go back to my instructions now. I set up the SDK with my specific project. The only thing left to do now that the setup is really all done is I need to make API requests so it can start documenting and assessing my API. So I'll go back to the dashboard here. Oh, actually, I think this page will disappear once I start making API requests. So let me just make my first API request. I'll refresh the app. Just do view all here. And you can see the fireworks. It says I made one request and that I have two endpoints. So it just records endpoints as it goes along. There's nothing I have to do here to set up each individual endpoint because the middleware gets run on every single request. So it will be able to track every single request as long as I have it as, you know, the global middleware for my entire project. So I can make some more requests. Let me see if I remember my login information. Well, let me just register an account then. I'll say Gwen. And my email will be gwen at example.com. Password, I'll just put Gwen Gwen. Cool. Now I need to verify my email. Of course, that's not a real email. So I'll just come to my database, take a look at my verifications here. It should be the last one that came in. So I'm hoping this is the verification code without having to check the user ID. Basically, these verification codes are generated and stored in this database table. So I'll just come back here to my application, the verification code. And I guess it worked because now I can go back and log in. My password. I haven't created any curriculums for this user, but I can see the ones other users have created in this tab. And I can also go and create my own here or by using this button. So I'm just going to create a new one real quick. I'll just create a dummy curriculum. And I can create sections and resources here. I believe I need at least one section. Just put anything here. I can save that. Hmm. Not sure what happened to this page. But I believe, yeah, if I go back to my curriculum list, I can see the one I just created and interact with the different sections that I've created. So I can actually add a resource now, I think. And let me see. Oh yeah, it did add. I've used quite a few of the endpoints now. Let me go back to Treble and see how it's doing recording things. Let me refresh here. And you can see it's recorded 24 requests to 16 endpoints. On the dashboard, it just gives me a quick overview of the endpoints. I actually got an error here. I'm not sure what happened. When I was posting that new resource, it actually returned a 500. So before I dive into the stats there, let me see what happened in my API. I believe it's in the curricula file. 
Let me just search for slash resources. So this is the endpoint. It's definitely supposed to be saving here. I'm not sure yet just from looking at it, but I'm not going to fully debug that right now. But anyway, this might be a good example because we can just take a look at the request breakdown first here. So it shows us the parameters that we're sending where we're trying to create that new resource. So over here, this is where we were creating this new test resource and we passed in the name and the URL. It automatically detected the authentication that we're using this token. It pulled that out of the request. And just from the parameters that we passed into the endpoint, in the post body, it created this documentation saying that this endpoint is expecting two variables, a name which should be a string and a URL which also should be a string. I'm not sure yet if this would be able to update or no, if this was supposed to be an enum or there were certain regex that was supposed to parse the string. I think it would be interesting if Treble could maybe look at the test suite or some of the code of the API to add some additional information. But I think this is a pretty good standard definition. And for the headers, it records all of the headers that I passed. Of course, we already saw the authorization header with that token. This is just a simple API, but of course there are more different types of headers that it can record. And it also does the response. Of course, it's a 500 response, so it didn't um, return anything just because of how my old API is set up. We can look at another endpoint to see that in a minute. But the security audit is interesting because it breaks down all of these important security considerations here and denotes their impact that they might have. And then it grades your vulnerability status if you are susceptible to these types of threats. And then if you expand this, it'll just tell you a little bit about what these mean. Some of these, I think you have to take endpoint to endpoint, like IDs versus UUIDs. For example, if you have user IDs, you might want to have UUIDs for those. But if you have some kind of a data table, maybe, notification types or something, something that isn't critically private information, it's fine to just have incremented IDs on those tables. But I think this is important security concern depending on the endpoint. It also gives me some information like the response time in milliseconds and rates my security threat level for this endpoint. One in interesting feature here that I never really thought of before I tried out this application is that I can share this request information with somebody else. So if I want to share this with another developer who doesn't have access here or a contractor or something, I can just temporarily share this endpoint information via a link that I can set to expire. And if I share that, this is copied to clipboard now. So I think if I create let me create a new private browser. Just paste the link and you can see they, they can see all of that information on the link. Actually, this is a good summary and I'm guessing if I wasn't on localhost, all of this information, like the IP and stuff, this would have been filled out as well. Let me go out of my private browser. If I go back here, let me go back to the dashboard and go to a different endpoint. Oh, let me go to requests. Let me see. Let me filter by endpoint. And I think I just want regular endpoint. Oh, these are the options. Okay, let me look at the post request. This is pretty much the same. It's still saying my response size was bad. Let me actually go to one that has an actual response. And I think actually I didn't filter correctly last time. If I go to, let's say endpoint, 
actually method first. So let me do a get method and I can start typing. Let me do get to here. Okay, this one is the get to get the list of all of the curricula. So it returns that big list. And let me see what the documentation is. Okay, so it returns the documentation what each object should look like in that list. Headers. I think I failed the secure connection here because Oh yes, because I'm on localhost, I'm using HTTP.HTTPS. So that would be resolved once I deploy the application, which I'm gonna try a deployed application here in a second. Those are basically all the details about the request breakdown. You can also go into detail on each different endpoint and view each individual request for each endpoint but this is just cumulative for the whole endpoint. And this is what I was talking about earlier that I said I would come back to. If you remember when we set up the trouble middleware for requests, there's this option additional fields to mask. And that's basically maybe private fields or personal information that you don't wanna pass over to the trouble API. And of course, things like Password, we don't want to send that anywhere else, like for logging in the Treble API. Um, but by default, Treble actually masks a lot of these fields for us. So by default, it'll mask any field called passwords and just re replace it, basically replace every character with a star. So it will be eight stars. So you can still see the length of the field. You just won't be able to see the original data that it contained. Now, one thing that I think we have to make a custom mask for was remember it showed the whole bearer token. I don't actually think I need a custom mask, but I just need to pass in the authentication field to fields to mask. And I believe it will just be masked. Here's a list of all the fields that are masked by default. And then this is how to basically add to that list. So that's the endpoints. You can see any open issues and manage your issues with the API and any related requests. Flows is interesting, not something I'm going to demo now, but they actually have an interesting video if you want to check it out. It's basically if you have a feature with multiple endpoints that let's say need to be triggered sequentially, so one after the other, then you can set it up as a flow here and then share that flow with other people. And I think one interesting use case, I haven't tested this yet, but you could share it with, let's say you're building the API, you could share it with another team who's going to be interfacing with that API and show them this is how you're supposed to interface with this API. These are all the requests and what order that you need to make them in and what parameters they're expecting, etc. The next tab is your API scores. You can see it gives you a score for performance. I have a zero right now, which I think it's because I haven't deployed the application or maybe there's not enough data here yet. And then for security, of course, I don't have HTTPS because it's a local application. And then authentication, partially because I do have some public routes and some authenticated routes in the application. You can see in the code base, I have this auth router where you have to be logged in in order to create something, but you can view anything without being logged in. And then it also gives me a quality score. Now, one interesting use case for these metrics is that you could show people the dashboard or you can download a report and share it with even other teams or the leadership at the company. If you're trying to show that, hey, we need to focus on improved security and maybe allocate resources or realign our priorities, you have some data to back up what you're saying here. 
And even just for your own decision making and development, it's nice to be able to see this overview and get an idea of what you need to work on. Settings are just settings for this individual project. There's nothing really to look at here. And the other things to note are this overall API score that it gives you. If you click on this, it takes you to your API scores. So between the three, performance, security, and quality, overall, we get a score of 35 out of 100. Now, if we deployed, that would go up a little again because we'd have HTTPS. I don't know, maybe there's some setting where we can turn that off here, or maybe it's a configuration in the SDK, I'm not sure. I guess because we would want to maybe turn that off for local development. Anyway, a really great feature that I, we haven't looked at yet is the auto-generated API docs. For each of your projects, as you make API requests, it will generate documentation for each endpoint. And it also gives you a couple options here. So if you want to share, you can actually share the open API spec, which is a standard with anyone via this link. And it also gives you the option to view the documentation in Swagger if you're used to that style. So you can see it's a, it's a regular Swagger interface here. And it gives you pretty clean documentation that you can go through here. One really cool feature hidden inside the docs here is this little assistant called Alfred, which is basically an AI tool that is context aware about your API so you can interact with it. And let's just use the default question or that sample question. What's the base app for this API? So see that it knows about your application. It should be able to write some code for us. So I haven't tested this for this specific thing yet, but let me just ask it, can you write a test for the login endpoint to make sure the user is authentic? authenticated properly. I could probably word that a little bit better, but let me see what it turns out. Cool, so I'd assumed I was using Jest, okay. And oh, I see it didn't completely format correctly. Oh no, it just wasn't done yet, cool. So there's my test. I don't actually have Jest installed in my backend, I don't think. Let's see. Oh, I do actually. Do I have any tests? No, I don't have any tests yet. Okay. So I can try that out later. See if the test actually runs. Is there a copy? I don't see a copy, but I guess I can just manually copy and try that out. But just from looking at it, it seems pretty good. It tests the case that it should return a valid token when the user logs in correctly, and it also gives a test case for invalid credentials, so it should fail. So you can play around with that. You can also generate SDKs for your endpoint and do lots of different things in here and ask it questions and stuff since it knows about your entire API and the context that Treble calculates off of your API. So I'm gonna close that and go back to the project dashboard. Now that we've looked at that project, I thought it might be interesting to actually look at a live project. There's actually an API that I created. So let me pull this up. I actually built an API real quick using this site called Glitch. It's just a place where you can kind of code live in the browser and you can actually code both the front end and back end. It works best with full stack JavaScript. I tried it out with Python, it's kind of finicky, but people have different workarounds for using like Golang or Python. But anyway, if you use full stack JavaScript, it works really well and it has built in features where you can just add packages from here. 
I wanted to try out this Fastify framework, which is supported by Treble. Treble actually has an SDK for Fastify. The app we just looked at, the curriculum app we just looked at, uses Express, so I thought I'd use a different framework for this. And just real quick, the breakdown of the project is the endpoints are all in this one kind of short, not too long, uh, server file, so less than 200 lines. And in the source, we have pages. These are handlebar templates. They should be, you know, pretty straightforward, easy to read here. Oh, it's actually giving me a status code 500. I think that's because this endpoint, this default endpoint, this was the starter endpoint it gave me, but all these other endpoints are the ones I actually created. So let me just go to events and you can actually see the application. So you can see this little event page that I built with very rudimentary styling. It's basically a list of supposedly local events and you can interact with these events, you know, see the information, go back to the events list. You can delete them with this rubbish barrel over here. You can create a new event. So there's some interaction here. You can also search. So if I search, I can search for one, clear the search. Anyway, what I really want to get into is I want to try to install the Treble SDK here. You can see they have a Fastify SDK. And I'm going to create a new project for this. So if I create a new Treble project, I can say, Fastify events demo. And what's my domain here? So one great thing about Glitch is that it actually gives me a domain for previewing. So if I go to preview, actually this is the, wait, copy link. Okay, it's plaid vagabond parrotfish glitch. So it generates this URL for me and I should be able to use that for my project. So let's see. Um, my platform is Fastify. Environment is, let's call it production this time since it's actually deployed. Team members, that's fine. I'll create the project. Okay, so install Fastify. I already have this page pulled up here. Of course, I can't run this in glitch, but I can, if I go to my package JSON, I can click add package here. And if I search Fastify, oh, it's not Fastify I want, it's actually Treble. There we go. Now Treble Fastify, that's what I really want. Okay, and it says package added and where is it? Treble Fastify. Okay, so I have Treble installed. What's next? Oh, I do need these two environment variables. So let me go here. I have my env file here. Oh, I just uh, put a random one here, but I'll put my Treble API key and add another variable, which will be my Treble project ID. And I'm going to add these. I'm just using the default, so I don't think I need the options again. So let me just try to add those two variables. I have my API key and I can put it here and my project ID. And that's it. Everything in glitch auto saves. So I think those are saved. Now, if I go back here, let's see, what else do I need to do? So I should be able to just make API requests now. So yeah, let me just go back and forth on some of these endpoints. Let me create a new event. Let me do maybe ocean cleanup. Oh, I guess I already added one. Uh, let's see, Boston Harbor. Oh, let's say Hull. Uh, it's a town in, it's a little peninsula town in Massachusetts. Let's see, description is 
let's clean up our planet. Okay, so create event. And now you can see I have 25 events. So if I search for ocean, yes, I already put ocean cleanup. You can tell what I'm thinking about. And now I have ocean cleanup two. And now I'm gonna go back to trouble and let's see, oh, let me go here. Oh, right, I, I must need to set up middleware. I think I forgot that. Yes, here it is. I totally forgot that because I just focused on the options, but actually I never set up the middleware for this. So let's do that uh, after handlebars here. It's my imports and let me, let's see, fastify register. I'll put it up here actually. So, well, let me go back. Yeah, fastify register. So what is this complaining about? Fastify, oh, it's spelled incorrectly. Okay, cool. So Fastify register, and now I already did all that, but let me just make sure first this time. Okay, cool, sweet. So five requests, it says zero endpoints. I think that just takes a second to update. And, oh cool, it's already populated. I think because it's a live website, now it's actually populating with the map of where the requests are from. So if I make a couple, let's make a couple more requests here. Let me just search, let's do tech. And now if I do this, um, create a new event. Okay, let's do another ocean cleanup, ocean cleanup. Three, let's set this for a few weeks out. Let's do, uh, can you remember how to spell that? Gloucester, I think that's it. Description, let's clean up. Okay, create event. So I interacted with some APIs and let's say we're canceling one of these ocean cleanups so I can get a delete request. All right, you can see delete event deleted successfully. Let me clear that. All right, now if I go back to trouble, let's see, I think it didn't update yet. Let me go to requests. I'm actually just recording a quick follow-up after I finished the other video because I was kind of wondering why um, some of my endpoints weren't registering when I tried it out on Glitch, but it was actually my own user error, so that's why I'm interjecting here. I realized it wasn't really tracking endpoints that were, let's say, not this one. So this is a redirect. Let's... um. Oh yes, uh, we're returning this handlebars template here. So if we're just returning a template serving an HTML page, then that's not really a JSON API, so it's not tracking it. But when I set this raw query parameter to equal JSON and it returned that list of events, you can see that that shows up here. So we can see the list of events here and it shows you know, the response as we, we would expect. I was wondering why doesn't it have all of the endpoints is because they're not actually JSON. So I tried it out on an individual event here. So I just put event slash event ID raw equals JSON. I tried it out a few different ways and if I didn't pass an ID, it correctly you know, gave me a 404 and if I did, you can see the response here is that event. It actually works just fine. It was just, I wasn't using it correctly. I could probably rework this a little bit, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out. So you can still try this out on Glitch and definitely let me know if you do end up remixing this project. I'd love to see what you create. So Glitch has this cool feature called Remix where you can click on this and then you can actually, it's kind of like forking the project for yourself. And then you'll be able to edit it and build out your own application, try it out for yourself. And that way you could, you could go into trouble, generate your own project and API keys, and then just try it out of the box. So this is a really good environment for checking it out. That's pretty much all I wanted to show. 
I really think Trouble has a great community and team behind it. I want to try out some of the other plugins here. Maybe a year or so ago, I put a crash course about Strapi, which is an open source headless CMS uh, written in JavaScript. I put that or I published it over on Brad Traversi's channel, Traversi Media. And Strapi basically gives you this really cool interface that lets you build these APIs with different relationships really quickly. And I think between the Strapi interface and then adding a tool like Trouble to monitor it, you could actually deploy an API really, really quickly. And of course, the differentiator or the main reason you would use Trouble is for being able to track and monitor your application in production. One other thing I want to point out is that Trouble does have a couple native applications you can download. So I have the desktop and also the mobile application on my phone now. So it's not just browser based, but you actually get these pretty fluid native applications to use on your devices. If you're interested, there's actually a link for a new feature that they created called API Insights where you can add a specification URL for OpenAPI or upload a file of your OpenAPI JSON and get insights on it. I'm just going to click on the Try Demo Insights here so you can see what it looks like. And you can see without even signing up for an account with Trouble, you can just use this free tool that they give you and get some of the insights that we looked at earlier. So this tool is a great place to start if you're interested. That's it for this video. You know, I'm a huge fan of startups, so I'm very happy to be able to demo this application for you. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, leave them in the comments section below. And you can also check out the Discord link in the description if you want to continue the conversation over there. Thanks so much for your time. I hope you have a great week. And I'll see you in the next video.